That's right, my friends, the best is yet to come. Now, what does that mean? That means that now is the time to plant the fall garden. And I'm gonna say a little bit about it, and then I'm gonna show you exactly what plants you need to be planting now for a beautiful fall harvest. So, contrary to the way that it sounds, a fall garden is actually planted midsummer now. Uh, it is for ripening and harvesting in the fall and the very early stages of winter. So why do I consider it the best of all the harvest seasons? Uh, is because the plants, as, as it gets colder, the plants sense the chill in the air and they move sugars from other parts of the plants into the leaves and the fruits and, and the parts of the plant so that it doesn't freeze, so that it isn't damaged by the frost because uh, f sugar water freezes at a lower temperature than regular water. You understand? So that makes things like peas, sweet peas, and uh, collard greens, and cabbages, and all of that, it makes them just sweeter and more succulent because the plant is moving the sugars into the leaves to try to uh, counteract the effects of the cold. So some of these crops, as you'll see, are best once they've been kissed by a few soft frosts because that really signals to the plant, ramp up that sugar production, especially the sweet peas. Oh man. So in this video, I'm going to show you what you need to know and what you need to be planting now because make no mistake, my friends, winter is coming. That's why I'm wearing this kind of winter gear to subconsciously remind you that winter is on its way, uh, but not yet. So what do we plant for the fall garden? Now, the first thing, now, the very first thing is the cabbages, okay, which we make sauerkraut, we make kimchi out of the Napa cabbages and stuff. So, um, personally, I have already started, see, so if you've been watching my other videos, you already have started your fall garden stuff. So the cabbages need to already be started for the most part. See, this here is a Brunswick cabbage. And so it is a very big, large, uh, solid drumhead cabbage and it takes up a lot of space it takes a lot longer than other cabbages but it stores really well and it makes the incredible sauerkraut so i'm going to be planting these pretty much today it's the first week of august in zone 5b 6a northern indiana uh, and so we're going to be planting the cabbages now if you don't okay so that was the big drumhead ones but if you haven't started them yet it's okay, go for something like a golden acre, all right? That's gonna go uh, a lot faster, I forget exactly. Yeah, see, they say 60 to 100 days, but they're ready within 60, 70 days, all right? Also, the glory of Einkusen, that's a really, uh, it's a much quicker one. Now, they're gonna be smaller and less dense, but still wonderful. So, cabbages, you're planting cabbages now. Preferably transplants, but still, you can put seeds in the garden and they, they will go, especially if you're gonna have some kind of, um, a season extender, which I'll show you guys how to make a real cheap, easy um, uh, hoop house out of PVC and rebar and uh, um, plastic sheeting. Okay, so, and that will dramatically extend the days the, uh, um, of your season for these certain crops. So you can plant them with that in mind. Um, so the cabbages. Next thing is going to be the Napa cabbages. This is for kimchi and for. Um, uh, Chakonabe, the, the sumo wrestler stew, which I'll show you guys how to make all these awesome recipes come fall time. But uh, the Chinese cabbages. Now I have already uh, started these, but you can plant them. They only take 55 days, so you can plant them now, all right? And guys, let me just say real quick, go ahead and assess your garden. Look throughout and see what plants are not thriving. Which plants, plants have produce some stuff, but then they're kind of look like they might be catching a disease or the production has slowed down and stuff. Guys, do not waste your time trying to nurse along these ill kind of sickly plants, okay? Most, uh, when we look to nature, all plants have a season that they have a particular point in that season with which they thrive and they produce all their stuff and then they, they die if they're annuals or, or they go dormant, you know? So these kind of vegetables, they don't produce steady all season long. So don't think that you're gonna nurse along your sick little cucumber plants and you're gonna get, you might get one or two more. Okay, this is, this is the universe telling you, I'll be the one to tell you, go ahead and make the call, okay? Cut it, pull them out, leave the roots of mostly everything, 
just cut them at the ground level and plant your fall garden because it's going to revamp things grow really fast and wonderful in this now the soil's nice and warm it's nothing like planting in the cold wet soil of overcast cloudy spring now stuff is going to grow really fast because the soil's nice and warm the life in the soil you've been using all the organic ferments and stuff like that the jdom stuff all the fertilizers from this channel so go ahead pull out the stuff that's not thriving and replace it with one of the crops that you're seeing here okay so we've covered um, cabbages also napa cabbage now the very next thing and the best of the best is the peas the fall peas are magnificent because they're kissed by the frost and that makes them become super sweet now here's the trick my friends here is the number one tip worth the price of admission for fall gardening, only plant dwarf variety of peas, okay? Do not plant these big tall telephone or the sugar snap peas that get like six or seven feet tall. The big, the big tall uh, ones, do not plant these ones because they spend too much time creating infrastructure before they start flowering. And it's gonna get too late in the season. You want plants, when you try to find your fall variety of peas, look for these key words alaska pea is one of the earliest peas vines grow to only two and a half feet tall uh, another one uh, early progress number nine one of the earliest long potted peas uh, plants grow to 20 inches and this 55 days delightful dwarf variety so look for varieties that say earliest and dwarf you only want them growing about two feet tall and then they start producing loads of, of peas. That's gonna give you the best harvest for, for the fall time, okay? So see, you plant them now, soak them for about 20 minutes in water, uh, preferably in the J-Dom uh, microbial solution, a little bit of that and a little bit of maybe uh, leaf mold water. Soak it in that for about 20 minutes and uh, then plant them out. And they're gonna grow nice while it's nice and hot and then they're gonna uh, ripen up come frost. All right now the next thing so peas get planting the peas definitely you can freeze them can them dry them out and use them for sprouting midwinter like i do uh, next thing is the carrots now is coming time to plant the carrots i have multiple different kinds of carrots here um, and all of them are going to love especially these ones the kyoto they love they can take a heavy frost really uh, they can grow until if you do carrots right in the ground they will grow until it, it gets below freezing and remains below freezing and then you can just put a bunch of leaf mold or hay or straw or or organic matter over the top of them and then just pull them out as you need them all the way up until like january that's the way i do it here and the ground stuff freezes solid here i mean it gets cold cold here and you can do it that way okay so carrots and they're going to be part of the kimchi they're going to be part of all the good ferments that we're going to be doing next thing is beets go ahead beets love the cool okay beets you can plant a whole nother crop of beets right now right from seed not a problem all right you can also plant one more run of bush green beans now these aren't here these are honorable mentions you can also plant one more crop of bush green beans because they go fast uh, and also one more crop of uh cucumbers contrary to popular belief you could still plant the cucumbers it'll grow fast make sure it has lots of the nitrogen fertilizers like the urea or the fish fertilizer whatever it is but just make sure that they have everything they need and you can still get a crop of bush green beans and um, cucumbers but the moment it frosts they're dead okay tomatoes peppers cucumbers squash any of the vines stuff like that the moment it frosts they're all dead okay Whereas these crops can take frost. Everything I'm showing you packets of here can handle some frost. Now, next thing is gonna be your greens, okay? Now is the time. You can be planting the collard greens. I got loads of collard greens out there. In fact, I'm about to plant this today. So, see these starts? And uh, so let me know if you want, well, it's actually pretty simple. I just do these cups and then put a little shade cloth outside to keep them from the direct blazing sun. But I'm gonna transplant these now and they are going to uh, get really nice and flavorful, especially the brassica leaves. Once they get some frost, they can freeze solid and thaw back out. And that just makes them sweeter and more succulent. It's so delicious and full of nutrients. The same is true with the, with the mustard greens. You can plant mustard greens by seed now right in the garden and you will get nice 
pungent, flavorful mustard greens. Also the Swiss chard. Swiss chard can take a light frost. This stuff is delicious. It's a good spinach substitute because spinach bolts in the sun. Uh, spinach is a joke. It's a total joke. Unless you live somewhere like in the Northwest where it's just sort of consistent, very temperate. Spinach can grow well there. Here, it just bolts because the temperature extremes are too high. Whereas Swiss chard never bolts for me unless you overwinter it. Um, so you've got your uh, greens and everything there. And that's pretty much it, my friends. I mean, oh, and daikon radishes, but I couldn't find the seed packet. So the long cylindrical, they're also called, um, I, I forget what it, tiller radishes. You know, they, they uh, improve the soil and they go down really deep and break up the soil. Daikon radishes, I plant lots of those um, right now in the mix of these uh, Chinese cabbage beds. So I interplant them so that it's all ready for the kimchi because I love the kimchi. So. All right, my friends, hopefully this has given you a good idea of what you can plant for the fall garden. There's obviously a few more things, but these are the most important things that I'm planting, okay? And uh, the, the potatoes are gonna start to be harvested and cured. The onions and garlic have all been harvested and cured. Garlic, we will plant way late. Later, it's the very last thing that gets planted, all right? Uh, even after the cover crops. So I'll be doing videos on that, don't worry. Guys, check out the live streams that I'm doing because I uh, write down what the most common questions are I get from you guys throughout that week and then I just answer them and talk about them all during uh, the live streams so check those out it's full of information uh, check out the links in the descriptions there's all kinds of stuff if you want to help out the channel help it grow there's a link to the PayPal or whatever way you want to contribute uh, also just leave a comment in the, in the description below leave a comment uh, doesn't matter what it is because that helps the channel grow. The algorithm says, oh, okay, this is a video worthwhile, so we're gonna help it grow. And people need to be knowing this knowledge, all right? So, till next time.